David Brewster here with another episode of Breaking Chords, and this is string skipping arpeggios. And I know for me, uh, you know, I first noticed string skipping uh, from studying Paul Gilbert and kind of listening to, you know, Racer X and some of Paul Gilbert's uh, music when I was younger. And, uh, you know, I was already familiar with arpeggios, but when I noticed he was string skipping a lot of arpeggios, um, you know, it kind of excited me because I was already used to using legato, you know, from studying and working on a bunch of Satriani. And then when I noticed what Paul Gilbert was doing, you know, where it was kind of stretched and, and skipping over strings, um, I had a lot of luck with it, you know, because sweet picking is something that I use, um, but I did kind of notice string skipping before I really got into sweeping. And um, I just, I really prefer the sound. I think you can sequence and kind of arrange uh, string skipping arpeggios in a really different way. And uh, that's what this lesson is going to focus on. The first thing we're going to do is just pick a key, all right? And I'm just going to select uh, C sharp minor, uh, mainly because I really like that key. It's kind of a cool, uh, you know, cool guitar key. And uh, we're going to focus on C sharp minor, and we're going to locate just a one octave arpeggio. So think of, you know, whenever you're thinking of arpeggios, think of chord shapes. And whenever you're working with or thinking of chord shapes, think of arpeggios because they do kind of go hand in hand. So let's get, you know, like in the ninth position right here. And think of that, you know, C sharp minor bar chord right there. Let's grab the top part right here, this uh, you know, C sharp minor arpeggio right there. Let's also grab this E note here on the 12th fret on the high E. So we can definitely play it that way. Like you can sweep it, you can, uh, you know, kind of pick through it. But to string skip that, we're going to relocate this G sharp uh, to the 13th fret on the G string, like this. See, we're doing the same thing. Just in a different way. So instead of doing this kind of one note per string pattern, now we're kind of grabbing, you know, two notes on the string. Right there, if you want to think of, you know, C sharp minor as the one chord, could do like a 1-5 progression, you know, C sharp minor to G sharp minor, just simply by taking that shape and just moving it to uh, a lower set of strings. So here's C, uh, C sharp minor once again. Just move everything down a string and then you have G sharp minor. And that's kind of a really easy way to move back and forth. So if we shift this minor triad or arpeggio to major, you know, some of you out there might want to think of that as D flat major, which is fine. Um, or you could think of it as, you know, C sharp major. But uh, technically what we're going to do there, though, is raise uh, the E to E sharp. string skip that and we're just going to relocate the G sharp to the same string but the other uh, you know the other notes that we had to kind of modify are also going to shift too so instead of this you know, we have to basically change uh, you know that E to E sharp just kind of readjust you know, your thinking of you know what you're playing and how you're playing it so instead of this you're doing this right same notes just a different approach and a different way of playing it right there was you know C sharp major or D flat major and if we move down a set of strings you know there's you know G sharp major or A flat major just like the minor shape, you know, it stays the same. You know, as far as the finger. 
fingering. So let's select a different progression, you know, instead of doing that 1-5 progression. Um, let's go to the relative major, let's go to the third. So there's C sharp minor, and we're gonna shift, you know, to E major. C sharp minor. And then we can basically jump lower, you know, and grab uh, E major right here. You can also go higher, you can grab that E on the 14th fret there on the B string. Once you get used to these shapes, you can start targeting, you know, chord progressions. So let's just do like a 1, 4, 5 and C sharp minor. C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp minor. And we can just basically outline those chords like this. And there I'm just making a little sequence, you know, out of the notes from those arpeggios. You know, something like that. And you can make all kinds of little, you know, sequences and licks and phrases, you know, using the shapes and fingering of those arpeggios. And we could twist that last progression, you know, and we could do, you know, a minor one, you know, C sharp minor, um, you know, a minor four with the F sharp minor shift to G sharp major and you're gonna imply you know harmonic minor basically you know, which you'll hear that in tons of classical music and uh, you know a bunch of classic rock and stuff too and it's kind of like a Paul Gilbert you know sequence right there. the notes of that arpeggio around once again. You know, which is really cool. Now that would bring in uh, kind of a Paul Gilbert secret here where he has these kind of interesting shifts that he used to do uh, quite frequently with uh, Racer X. And you know if we use you know the C sharp minor um, we can catch him occasionally shifting back a fret to kind of imply harmonic minor and then also shifting that top, uh, you know, fingering up a whole step, which that would help you kind of jump into that E major arpeggio we were just playing with. So instead of just playing C sharp minor and E major straight up and down like this, Paul would sneak in stuff like this. Let me go through that kind of slowly. So we're going to start with the C sharp minor. And there I'm just grabbing that F sharp, you know, up on the 14th fret there on the high E. Just a passing tone, really. And then right there, we're going to go down a fret and just mirror that same fingering. You know, and we're implying harmonic minor big time right there. There, we're gonna shift that up a whole step, and there we've got F sharp and uh, you know that D sharp right there, and then that's gonna lead us into E major, which is waiting right here. And then you just basically shift back down to C sharp minor again.
That's going to wrap this look at uh, string skip arpeggio. So leave some feedback and some comments. Let me know if you're getting anything from the series. And uh, I'll be back before you know it with more lessons and material. Thank you.